Welcome to another edition of the Ballot Power Show. I'm your host, Tijan Ba. Um, this is the show that seeks to enhance the credibility of the constitutional review process. And with me to um, discuss on these issues is uh, Mr. Dembaba. Yes. Uh, Mr. Dembaba is a political activist and commentator. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Ba. Thank you very much, Mr. Tijan. Okay, Mr. Ba, let's mm -hmm. get to know you a little bit before we go into the conversation. Um, well, Mr. Ba, known as Dembaba, is self-employed, but active in politics, and also participate a lot in the social media. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so you you comment on social and political issues. issues yes. And we understand also you work with youth groups. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so we tell us about the CRC. How did you see the work of the CRC? In your own view, as a as somebody who follow things um, very very regularly and also comment on issues, um, did you think the the CRC fulfilled their mandate? Um, uh, actually, the CRC, which is Constitutional Review Commission, it came it to being from a National Assembly Act in 2017. They were mandated, mandated to review the 1997 constitutions to see what adjustments can be made to improve it. So, in that case, they have been in consultation with various constituencies and regions throughout the country extensively. And for that matter, they have really consulted the people to take on their opinions and their line of thought and their understandings of what the constitution should be. Then after they came back, they studied all the take intakings from the people analyze it and then drafted a constitution which we understand to be the draft constitution 2020. But um, before we come to this original draft which they brought out, they did bring out the, the first draft which was also subjected to scrutiny and for amendments. That is why we had that hot debate on secularism. They had to go back and then readjust the first draft to come up with this final draft. So for the CRC, they have really fulfilled their mandates by providing us with a draft constitution. They have. Okay. Yes. So in your opinion, they have fulfilled their mandate mm -hmm. by giving us a good draft constitution. Yes. Um, so in in their mandate also, they were supposed to, you know, consult the, the people of the Gambia. Yes. Did you, do you think um, mm -hmm. they have consulted the Gambians well enough? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They have been going through the length and breadth of the country, talking to people in their own languages, almost all languages that, that we speak in this country. A fact or a testimony is to that is that this draft constitution is translated into nine local languages for the first time in the history of this country. Nine local languages or eight to be precise. So that shows you that in their consultation process they have been engaging the community. Almost all communities irrespective of their tribal affiliation or whatever. So if you have nine languages or eight languages translated in the constitution translated into those languages that shows that they have really been in consultation with the communities throughout the country. So that, that, that there's no question about that. Okay. They have they have been they have consulted the people. So I cannot understand the arguments that they haven't gone enough far enough. For me they have done far more than enough even to consult the people. They okay, they, they, okay. They, they, so they, yes. now the, the the draft constitution was mm -hmm. um, was forwarded to the president. Yes. And, and it was later taken to the um, National Assembly and mm -hmm. uh, a vote was done and eventually um, the draft was rejected mm -hmm. uh, because uh, majority of, 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 of parliamentarians mm -hmm. rejected the draft. Yes. Um, so you work with civil society also, you work with youth groups. Yes. Um, what was the role of civil society in the whole process? Um, do you think civil society also 
hand on their part of the part of the bit in the process yeah in fact right now the issue of the draft constitution lies with the civil societies but before i come to the role of the civil society in this draft constitution we need to understand after we have the final draft it was it is supposed to go through a process that is why it went through the executive who went through it and then forwarded it to the national assembly that is why I usually say that it was a process to facilitate the draft to reach us, as, us the public, to have a say through a referendum. So when it was submitted at the National Assembly under a bill called the Promulgation Bill to repeal the 1997 Constitution mm -hmm. and to debate on the merits and principles of the draft constitution, it was not meant to be rejected. The, the National Assembly was supposed to facilitate for it to reach its final destination, which is referendum. The people would then decide whether to accept the constitution or to reject it. It is their final say, not for National Assembly to do that for them. The National Assembly was supposed to debate the merits and principles of the draft constitution, compare it with the 1997 constitution to see how far has it gone to amend the shortcomings of the 1997 constitution. Mm -hmm. So still now I have a lot to contribute on that, but I'll give you time to... Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I was going to I was gonna put that to you. Yes. You know, that um, mm -hmm. the, it was supposed to be, uh, to it was supposed to be a, a constitution for the people, people to decide. That, that this is Unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, for now, mm -hmm. uh, we are at this level. Yes. Um, so let's talk about the executive. The, yeah, before we go to the national yes, assembly. Before we go to the national, national assembly. assembly. Yes. Um, the executive mm -hmm. um, had an influence. Yes. And observers like mm -hmm. you will yes. say that the executive had an influence on, on what the happened, whole process. On what happened at the national assembly. On the outcome assembly. of the vote. Yes. So what what's a, what what are your thoughts on on that? Yes. Um, as for the executive, the CRC submitted the draft constitution to the executive they have done their part on what is supposed to be done to facilitate the process to go through. Then to understand whether the executive hasn't done enough or not, we have to see what is the relationship between the executive and the National Assembly. Because if you look at the executive by itself, what, we are, what they were supposed to have done, they have done that, that is to proceed, provide a bill, the promulgation bill that has been done. It has been submitted to the National Assembly. So what was supposed to be done by the executive has already been done. So we cannot blame them for that. But then in order to understand, could, could they have done more than what is the relationship between the executive and the National Assembly? This is where the issue of personalities and partisanships comes into being. Now the, the question should be then, what led to the rejection of the bill? Interesting, interesting. Yes. So there, then we will be able to understand whether the executive is at fault or is it the national assembly or is it both institutions are at fault. So if I should ask you, yes. who do you think is at fault here? Um, uh, we don't want to blame people. Mm. Actually, there is something missing in this whole issue. For since if we go back in 2016, it was part of the coalition agreement for a constitutional and institutional reform. We have that. So for me personally, my take at the National Assembly is they could have facilitated this draft constitution to pass through from the first reading to the second and third readings rather than rejecting it. It wasn't meant for rejection. It's not for the National Assembly to reject the bill. Okay. But, yes, by so it, yes. I don't want to cut you here. Yes. But mm. Talking of uh, the rejection of the bill mm. by members of the National Assembly, assembly yes. Um, so that takes me to the question. Mm. Did the National Assembly mm. um, had enough consultation mm. with their constituents because they are representation? They, they are representative of the, of the people. Yes. Did they did they consult the people before they voted? They will be in a better position to answer that question personally, that whether they have consulted their constituencies. But to answer your question again, rather than there was no need for them to be even consulting their people for the CRC has done that 
For them, they are supposed to debate on the merits and principles and give concrete arguments for and against. Whatever mm -hmm. arguments they have, that could be documented and CRC will go, will go through it before it reached a referendum stage. It was meant for National Assembly members to put their input to contribute, just like the people did. National Assembly members also could have contributed. Their arguments and counter-arguments could have been filed and documented, given back to the CRC, because the CRC mandate expires when it reaches to the referendum stage. But then they haven't given the CRC that opportunity. They just rejected the bill from the second reading. So that derailed the whole process of this draft constitution. People are saying that it is the draft constitution that is rejected. No, it is the bill which is rejected. The draft constitution for the time being is suspended. Suspended? It's suspended. It's not dead, it's not killed, but suspended. Interesting, yes. interesting. Yes. So talking of suspend, suspension of, yes. the, draft, of, constitution, of yes. the draft constitution, yes. do you think the draft constitution should be brought back for voting? Mm -hmm. And if it is brought back for voting again, mm -hmm. what changes do you think that um, should be done in the draft? Yeah, there, there, there are some arguments at the national, if you listen to the debates at the National mm -hmm. Assembly, of course there are some valid points, especially on citizenship. Mm -hmm. So there are some amendments mm -hmm. on citizenship. But for the two-term limit, there is no question about that. That stays. For the two-term limits we needed, it stays in the Constitution. So there are other arguments also that I cannot just remember, but they have valid points in their arguments that need to be adjusted mm. in the Constitution. Okay, there yes. was another issue which was very contentious, um, yes. that is the, the issue of gay rights. Um, yes. And the whole secularism debate. Yes. You know? um, so what's your take on, the, on, the, uh, on this? Um, you see... <laughs> Um, uh, for secularism, the Gambia in actuality or in reality is a secular state or a secular country. So putting a word there or not putting it, it doesn't make any difference. For the Gambia, it's a secular country. Since independence up to date, it's a secular country. If at all it is uh, is secular, it's a religious issue. It doesn't have to be a religious issue. As I used to say, we are cultural and traditional people. Religion came and found us as cultured and traditional people. Obviously, the word secular, whether it is within the constitution or not, still now the Gambia is a state or a country that goes along with secular lines. So for me, arguing whether secular should be in the constitution or not, it doesn't make any difference, actually. People are practicing secular situation within their own environments. Okay, yes. so the, the, the constitution, the draft constitution is also seen as, mm -hmm. you know, very progressive and yes. there are issues like um, clauses on women representation, mm -hmm. youth representation, you know, people with disabilities, mm -hmm. you know, the increased number of clauses of human and, you know, and social rights. Mm -hmm. What are your take on this? Do you think the draft, is, you know, you. before yeah. you come to that, mm -hmm. do you think the draft itself is is progressive. That's what I'm saying. No doubt about it. It's far better than the 1997 constitution. If you compare them clause by clauses, it's far better. The unfortunate thing you mentioned about women's rights, um, we have in the National Assembly women who rejected this constitution. That is the unfortunate thing. When you have in the, in the draft constitution, there is a clause or a provision that says now, 14 women are allocated seats in the National Assembly, exclusive. They have to contest those seats among themselves within the seven regions. Every region is allocated to women. So you see, automatically we are going to have 14 women in the National Assembly. And that, that's very progressive. That, that's what I'm saying. Unfortunately, there are women in the National Assembly who voted against this draft constitution, not realizing that there is a clause or provision on this woman, the empowerment of women. And another, to, another, another important milestone in that draft constitution also is you, they, they task every political party in all National Assembly elections, those who are going to contest in, under their party ticket should have 10% of youths. I said it's great, but that is proportional representation for the youths. So you see, the, the, the draft constitution is, more, is far more progressive than the 1997 constitution. Mm -hmm. So it is just unfortunate that we, ha we voted on partisan and personal lines, and that is what led to the rejection of the promulgation exactly. bill. Exactly. Yes. Um, so let's look at the way forward now. Um, yeah. The draft has been mm -hmm. um, 
as you said uh, in your own words, yes. suspended for yes. now. now yes. Some people will say rejected. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so what is the way forward? Um, do we go back to the 1997 constitution and amend mm. um, the, what we will consider the bad laws or do we bring back um, the, the draft mm -hmm. and debate on it again and, and, and pass it for a mm -hmm. well, What's the way forward? In, uh, in fact, the actual process was to, to fuse the draft constitution mm -hmm. within the 1997 constitution. Because the problem here also, which, which we are encountering at the National Assembly level, especially when it comes to legislation, legislation mm -hmm. the, um, uh, the, the 1997 constitution doesn't have any provision that abrogates it or repeals it. The 1997 Constitution, what it gives you is for you to amend non-entering clauses to the National Assembly. Those entering clauses will be subjected to referendum. This is what we have in the 1997 Constitution. So the process was to facilitate for the draft Constitution to be fused within the 1997 Constitution. This is what they were trying to do. After that was the process at the National Assembly, then facilitate it for it to go to referendum. Because from the executive, you cannot just throw it direct to referendum. It has to pass through the National Assembly for them, for them also to have their intake. This was the process there that were, that were they're supposed to do. So to go forward now, what remains is we are stuck with the 1997 constitution. It is the supreme law of the nation for the time being. The draft constitution should be subjected to a debate by the public. As we said, civil society organizations should be continuing the debate and advocating for it to be implemented and then taken to a referendum. They have to put pressure on their national assembly members. They have to put pressure on the executive so that it could be brought back in another form whereby it could reach the population through a referendum. Mm -hmm. So that is only going to be the way forward. Okay. If it is. So, you know, um, the draft constitution, um, mm -hmm. I am very personal about this point. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Observers will say it was supposed to take power, mm -hmm. you know, from the executive, from mm -hmm. state house yes. and give it to the people yes. and take power to the people. Mm -hmm. um, according to a report, mm -hmm. uh, in late 2019, mm -hmm. a survey by IRR, mm -hmm. that is the International Republican Institute, yes, it is seven percent of Gambians agreed that the country needs a new constitution. Yes. Now the people are saying that they need a new constitution. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the wishes mm -hmm. and the aspirations of the people mm -hmm. have been betrayed? Mm -hmm. And who do you think betrayed them? Yes. You see, normally it's, it's about pointing fingers again, as uh, observers. We normally avoid pointing fingers to say the, the, here the fault, that this is where the fault lies or this person is responsible. As I said, according to the constitution, the 1997 constitution, and the organs of government is separated within three arms. That is the National Assembly, the executive, and the judiciary. So in order to read the situation we are, we have to try and understand what were the roles of all these three in arms of government institutions. As I said earlier on, almost majority of Gambians wanted for a new draft constitution, as you just mentioned in your project. Now the draft has been delayed, as I said, is suspended or delayed through a rejection of the promulgation bill. The, that rejection is not the draft. It is the bill that is rejected, but the draft is still there. So you ask me where the fault lies. I said the fault could be that those who are tasked of facilitating the process for it to reach a level whereby the public will have a say in a true referendum, they may have not gone through the draft constitution in comparison with the 1997 comparison. That is where the fault lies and the shortcoming. For their arguments, they just cherry-picked some provisions from the draft constitution and, this, and just analyzed it and rejected it based on itemized provisions. Exactly. You exactly. see, if you just uh, pull one provision or one clause and you debate on it, of course, we all have our, even I myself, in support of this draft constitution, there are provisions that I do not like. But that should not warrant our rejection of the whole document. 
So you see, this is, the, this is where the fault lies. For me, they could have documented all their arguments and counter arguments in or against for the Constitution. Let it be documented, filed in one place. CRC will take note of it. Before it reaches a referendum, adjustments could be made and then it will be subjected to a referendum. Then we would be dealing with a brand new Constitution, which all Gambians cherished. Exactly. Yes. exactly. So, um, so, Mr. Ba, um, before yeah. we go now, um, yeah. what will be your advice to the Gambian people, to government bodies, to every stakeholder involved yeah. in the process? What What will be your advice to the people? Well, for my advice will be for the executive, the National Assembly, and even the public as civil society organizations. This is a historic moment for the executive and the national assembly. For the first time, we have a constitution or a draft constitution being tabled at the national assembly for consideration. That is a historic moment. But it seems that history has now been divided into two parts between the votes of yes and no. And that's not good for the national assembly in terms of historical records. Even for those who voted yes, the assembly will be remembered as the assembly. Okay, Mr. Yes. Bar, um, yeah, thank you so much for <laughs> coming to the show. Yeah. We, uh, viewers, I'm afraid that is all we have time for. It's been a very, very interesting yeah. conversation with the you know, renowned Mr. Bar. Mm -hmm. I'm your host, Tijan Bar. Until we come again mm -hmm. uh, next time, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much, Tijan, and I'm glad to be here today having this discussion with you. Thank you very much.